Hey dear viewers, here's a challenge for you. What do you get when you mix a 555 timer, a busted audio jack, and a long ass train ride? Now that you've gotten a taste for it, want to find out how to make it? Stick around. Alright, so as can be seen in the circuit diagram, this circuit consists of essentially a modified 555 timer as stable multivibrator with an uh, audio low pass filter on the output. Alright, so to begin this project, find a breadboard like this one and stick a 555 timer right in the middle of it. Now, it's really important that the timer stays genuine because the shitty timers, they don't work so well with the high frequency and uh, they may end up destroying themselves. Alright, now you're going to want to proceed by sticking a 555 timer right in the middle of the board. Uh, make sure to keep the notch of the timer pointed upwards relative to the board. This will help avoid confusion and burning any timers. Alright, proceed by attaching an extension wire to pin 1. This wire will serve as the ground terminal for the circuit. Proceed by connecting pins 2 and 6 using a bent wire. Connect a 220 ohm resistor to pin 7 out to a free pad on the proto board. This will serve as our positive terminal. Make sure to keep the positive and negative terminals aligned for simplicity. Attach an extension piece from the negative rail over to the other side of the board. Make sure that the negative and positive rails do not touch each other. Otherwise, a short circuit which will, will be created, which can damage the power supply. Proceed by attaching an extension piece to pin 8 to the positive rail or the other end of the 220 ohm resistor. Connect pins 1 to pins 2 using our 680 picofarad filtering capacitor like so. Attach a 68 nanofarad capacitor between pins 3 and pin 5. Proceed by attaching a 100 microfarad capacitor to pin 5. This capacitor will be our audio input on our 555 timer class D amplifier. Insert it like so. These pins on the breadboard may be a little stiff. Proceed by attaching a filtering capacitor between pins 3 and pins 1. Note, this filtering capacitor has a value of 4.7 nanofarads and is honestly optional. It is helpful for cleaning up some distortion in the audio caused by the high frequencies. After attaching the capacitor, extend the capacitor using a little extension wire like so so as to connect it to pin 3. On the extended pin 3, connect a 220 microfarad capacitor. This will be our audio output. Connect it like so, making sure to have the positive rail of the capacitor face pin 3. Or, I should say, be connected to it. Alright ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, we have successfully assembled our circuit.
Now that the circuit's ready to be tested, let's turn on my uh, 1 kHz sine wave generator. And Shit. The circuit's not working. Time for troubleshooting. Alright, so after some intense troubleshooting, the culprit was found. Do you see these three bars on the circuit board where they're a little charred? Turns out, they're actually fused together, and that's why the circuit didn't work. Alright, so to alleviate this problem, I've assembled the same circuit on another board. Alright, so let's test this circuit out. Alright, so as can be seen here, I am feeding the circuit a 1 Hz sine wave. And uh, now it's definitely working on this board. Let's try with some audio. Alright, so moral of the story, the 555 timer is a great device and it can be used to make a little um, lo-fi amplifier, however there is much room for improvement. Specifically, improvements like removing the circuit from a breadboard and transferring it to a perf board and adding a transistor output stage. Anyhow, thanks for watching, here's your awesome vacation photo, please like, share and subscribe, thank you.